Good morning. Let's go ahead and start. Okay. We want to talk a bit more about chromatic number and maximum clique size. So the first couple of slides that I'm going to present here today are uh, remakes of things that we've already talked about. So we have the notion of a, a coloring, also called a proper coloring. It's just an assignment of labels to the vertices in a graph. Usually we use positive integers, but that's not necessary. They really can be colors, or they really can be uh, elements of any set. But the critical thing is that adjacent vertices have to be assigned distinct colors. So this is a seven coloring. In other words, there are seven colors. Uh, of course, in this case, just the first seven positive integers. And the, the notion of chromatic number is what's the fewest number of colors for which there is a legal or proper coloring. Now, here's an improved coloring. It uses only five colors. So we now know that the chromatic number of this graph is at most five. But we can then ask the optimization problem, what's the least number of colors? And for the graph that I've been using uh, in these illustrations, here is a coloring using four colors. And that's clearly the best that one can do. One cannot color this with three colors because the red vertices form a clique of size four. So the basic inequality is that the chromatic number is at least as large as the maximum clique size, and that's just pigeonhole. Uh, and in some instances, it is tight. And here is an example. The chromatic number and the maximum clique size are both four. So in today's lecture, at the beginning, we want to understand this inequality a little better. The chromatic number is at least the maximum clique size, but it doesn't have to be exact. At any time you take an odd cycle with five, seven, nine, et cetera, not three. If you take an odd cycle of size uh, five or greater, then the chromatic number is three, while the maximum clique size is only two. So the chromatic number can be at least one more than the maximum clique size. Now, when people first started thinking about this, it was believed that the chromatic number was always either the maximum clique size or the maximum clique size plus one, that it just hinged right there. But that turns out not to be true at all. And so we're going to explore instances in which the chromatic number is much bigger than the maximum clique size. And we're also going to look at the question, general question of, is there interest in graphs where, in some sense, it's tight? It's really tight. So first, we're going to look at the case where there is a disparity. And what we're going to show is that you can make the difference arbitrarily large. You can make the chromatic number as big as you want while keeping the maximum clique size only two, just like it is in an odd cycle. In an odd cycle, there are no cliques of size three. And cliques of size three look like this. Three vertices, each pair joined by an edge. And so it's natural to call such a triangle. And so people refer to a K3, or a clique of size 3, in the graph as a triangle. And if there are no triangles, if the maximum clique size is either 1 or 2, then the natural phrase is to say that the graph is triangle-free. It has no triangles. So what we're going to prove is that there are triangle-free graphs of arbitrarily large chromatic number. And we're going to give three different proofs of this. And uh, I'll try to make some historical comments about these proofs along the way, because uh, there's, there's some nice stories to tell. <laughs> 